Hey, what's up guys, Ramadaz here, and in this video I'll show you guys how to make your non-Xbox 360 controller to be recognized as an Xbox 360 controller, or in some cases, Xbox One controller. So you'll find that in a lot of games, if you have a generic controller that is not Xbox, uh, it will actually not be recognized, or in some cases it will be recognized, but the mapping is wrong, or the it might not work for, properly. So in this video, I'll show you guys how to fix that. Now in the link in the description, I actually posted this link that leads you into this website called the x360se.com. Now this is the Xbox 360 controller emulator. It's not an Xbox emulator, but it's just a controller emulator. And essentially what this program will do is make, make your game think that you're using an Xbox controller when in reality you're using a controller maybe off Walmart or something like that. Some kind of a cheap, you know, generic controller or joystick. Alright, so there are two download options right here. There's a one for 32-bit games and 64-bit games. I would generally recommend downloading them both, so I'm going to do that. And uh, you'll get these zip files, and I would just recommend extracting them into a folder. Alright, so I have both of these uh, .exe files right here. I have the x360se.exe, and I got the x 360 uh, sex64.exe so very weird names but anyway so this one is going to be used for 32-bit games and uh, this one you'll be using for games from like 2010 uh, or 2012 and uh, generally yeah, it, will, it will actually will show you if you need uh, the 32-bit one or the 64-bit one now I'll be using the 64-bit one I'm going to be showing you this on the fallout uh, as an example so let's do that right now Okay guys, now the way you, this program works, you first of all need to find the executable for the game you want your controller to work. So for my instance, I need to find Fallout4.exe. Now the way you find these, by the way, is it's uh, easier if you have a shortcut, because you can just right click on the shortcut and there's going to be a button right here that says open to open file location. But if you can't find it, just uh, search around on the internet. Um, but for Fallout 4, it's just in the main uh, folder. And the, what, what you're going to be doing is, what I like to do personally, is just to copy this over. Just click on Copy. I'm going to be using the x64-bit version of this because the Fallout 4 is a 64-bit engine, has a 64-bit engine. So I'm just going to be pasting it here. All right, so once you have this in the folder where the executable of the game is, I'm just going to run the program. Now, you don't just run it straight away. You actually want to run it as an admin, so just make sure you're running this as an administrator. So do that. And uh, what's it going to do is it's going to come up with this prompt. Now, it's going to say that the X input, which is the library file for your controller, is not found, so you want to just create one. So once you do that, you're going to have another prompt. So I'm using a SciTech controller, and uh, you can actually find the settings automatically on the Internet. And some people who have your controller will probably have uploaded the file for you to use. So I'm going to be doing just that. I'm just going to search around, and uh, woohoo, um, somebody actually made a profile uh, for Shadow of Mortar. But it doesn't really matter what kind of game it is. Uh, you can just find this one and click on Finish and all the buttons should be mapped. Now you heard the little uh, Windows sound, that means it's a good sound. That means your controller has been recognized and it should be working. So let me pick up my controller and it works 100%, that's good. Now if for some reason, you know, you didn't find the, um, or the mapping is wrong or, you know, didn't find the internet one, then you can just map the buttons yourself. You can just click on this little arrow and click record and you can record the A and the B and then, you know, every button you can just record. In addition to that, you can also mess with the force feedback, which is vibration. You can mess with that if your controller supports it. And that's pretty much it. You can just click on save and let's get into the game. All right, guys, so we are actually in game in the Fallout 4. And if I move my controller, it actually does work and it's actually working really well. All right, so for some people, if it still doesn't work, make sure that it's actually enabled in your settings. So, for example, in Fallout 4, there's a controller setting. So if I have this off, my controller shouldn't be working, but um, I guess it just recognized. Anyway, but make sure that your controller setting is on, and if it's on, it should work pretty well. So let's actually go in game, and I'll show you, you know, a little bit further. All right, and now I am in game, so I'm just gonna move my uh, controller stick, and it does work pretty well. All right, so um, you can also test around if you get the Xbox prompts. So if I'm gonna open up a door, 
I don't know, it doesn't really, oh, there we go. Yeah, as you can see, I get the prompts, so I wanna take some forks or transfer, I can do that. Anyway, so it does seem to work. Now let's guys, uh, let's talk about special instances. All right, guys, so let's talk about special instances. And by that, I mean that the games that you, even if you use my method before, it still doesn't work, then you might find this information a little bit useful. Okay, so I have Dark Souls Remastered. This is one of the games that I actually had some trouble with. And if I open up the, um, uh, you know, this, make sure I always turn it as an admin. Okay, so I have this enabled. As you can see, I get the sound, I get everything, it's cool. But uh, one of the problems I was facing, it, it wasn't working until I've enabled a couple of settings for Dark Souls Remastered. So I had to go into game settings, I had to select Dark Souls Remastered here, and actually enable this option right here, and actually enable the D input file to be 64-bit. And when I click to apply and, uh, you know, save the settings, it actually worked fine. So this is what I mean by special instances. For some games, it will still not work because, um, well, they're just, you know, special games, I guess. Maybe they're programmed a little differently. So, um, and usually the information you can find how to fix these is on the x360sc subreddit. So these guys actually have a subreddit where you can just, you know, ask questions or ask for help. And generally, you know, people will help you out. And this specific, you know, fix I found actually online. And uh, yeah, it seems to work. Now, I need to also say this, that this act, this program does not work for, you know, Windows Store games. So like games like Forza or Gears of War, this does not work for them. There's a separate application that you have to use for those games. But for this, uh, this application actually works only for, you know, Steam games or, you know, uh, other games aside from the Windows Store games because they actually work a little differently. All right, guys, so that's pretty much the video. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I know that Xbox controllers can be, you know, pretty expensive, upwards of sixty dollars, you know. So that's the price of a full, you know, a full price game. So uh, hopefully I, uh, I, you know, I helped you guys out by saving you guys some money. And if you enjoyed the video, please click the like button. And if you didn't, you can dislike it. Um, but anyway, I'll, I'll see you guys in the next video. And uh, yeah, enjoy your generic controller working on your any PC game. All right, see ya.